On this episode of Lumina for Classic, I'll show you how to tune SU carburetors. Welcome back to Lumina for Classic, and if you're new to my channel, I hope you stick around and consider subscribing. I put out new videos every week on some Jaguar and Classic car related content. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to tune SU carburetors. But if you want a brief overview of how the SU carburetor works, I've already made several videos about it. I'll put a link to them up above and down below so you can check out basic overviews of how the SU carburetor works. It's really good to know how your carb works before you want to tune it. I will be tuning that 1975 XJ6 as twin SU carburetors. However, if you have more, if you have three SU carburetors, it's basically the same thing. You just do it with one more. If you only have one SU carburetor, you don't need to balance them, so that's really good. But how to set the mixture is still the same. So this procedure basically works for all SU carburetors. One thing I really want to emphasize is that carburation is the last bit of a tune-up. So first you've got to make sure that your engine's healthy, that you have good compression, that you have nice clean new spark plugs, that your distributor is set correctly, that you have the right ignition timing, and that everything else is good. Fuel supply, everything, they have fresh fuel in the car. And the last thing you do is tune the carburetor. So just, this is the last part of tuning the car. So first I'm going to show you on the workbench, on a spare carburetor, basically how, how it works, how I tune it. Then I'm going to show you how to do it, and then I'm going to start up the car and do a live tune for you guys. So let's first head over to my workbench and have a look at a spare carburetor. Here are the tools I like to use when I adjust SU carburetors. I like to have two type of flat screwdrivers, a thinner one that fits on the smaller screws and a little wider one that can fit on some of the bigger ones and that can also be used to lift the piston when you're testing the mixture. But more on that in a little bit. And then to synchronize them, I like to use one of these type of unison synchronizers. This is a pretty uh, standard one. There's a valve here to open and close it and a little float that goes up and down. So I'll show this in action in a little bit on the car. Here is a spare carburetor I have just to show what I'm going to do. It's a lot easier to show here on the bench first. So the one thing you have to make sure first is that everything is in working order. You have the correct needles in there. Your flow is set to the correct level. So all of that has to be done before this. Everything else needs to be fine. And we talked about before, ignition timing, all of that has to be set. Then you have to make sure you have oil here for the dash pot dampener. So make sure you have the correct oil in there. A lot of people like to use different types of oil. You can use the original SU carburetor oil. Some people use ATF. Um, I mostly use regular engine oil. I think it runs just fine on that. Some people use gear oil. It's really up to your own preference. My car runs fine on engine oil. And I think that works really well. So there are two main adjustments we're going to have a look at. It's the amount of air that the carburetor lets through, so that sets the idle. And if you have multiple carburetors, you have to balance them out. That's why you have this. You can measure the airflow on each carburetor and make sure that they're the same. I'm going to show you how to do that in a little bit. And then you need to set the mixture as well. So you set how rich or lean each carburetor is. And on some carburetors, you can either use a lifting pin. It's a little pin here on the side to lift the piston a little bit for a test to see if it's rich or lean. Or you can use a little screwdriver in here and carefully, like so, lift the piston to test if it's rich or lean. And there are about three things that can happen. Here's a graph that can show you what can happen. So there are three different scenarios here. So if I lift the piston just very, very slightly and the RPM of the engine just dip right away, almost stalls, then your carburation is too lean. However, if I lift the piston just slightly and the RPMs rise more, the more I lift it and the longer I hold it open, it's too rich. If when I lift the piston you get a slight raise in RPM, less than 100 RPM, somewhere around 50 RPM, a slight raise and the plateaus off, your mixture is set up correctly. So that's what we're going to do on the car now. So we'll head over to my 1975 XJ6 and I'll show you how to tune your carburetors. This is the engine I'll be using for the demonstration. It's a Jaguar 4.2 liter XK straight six out of a 1975 XJ6. And these are twin HS8 carburetors. This is an SU AED, it's basically an auto choke. So I'm gonna remove this pipe here which feeds the auto choke into the engine. 
when I've warmed everything up and we're going to do the tuning, I'll put in little blanking plugs over here so I can remove this. So if you see this here, just ignore this for now because we're just going to tune the main carburetors. Down in each carburetor, there's two adjustment screws I'll be using. One down there is your idle adjustment. And that over there is your mixture adjustment. It's the same on this side. Since these don't have a manual choke, there is no fast idle. Otherwise, there would be one more adjustment screw for setting fast idle. So basically what you want to do, like we talked before, is get them to be in sync, balanced, and everything working correctly. So in order to be able to set up the air balance so that they suck the same amount of air through, you need to disconnect or loosen the throttle linkage so they're not connected together so that when you set the idle on this one, it should not affect this one. So on the jag over here, you can just loosen that little bolt and nut down there. And that will make these two be completely independent now. So that's one thing you gotta make sure because there's no point in trying to set your idle if when you set on this one to lower it, for instance, you lower this one, that you lower this one at the same time. They should be completely independent. Treat these as two separate carburetors that you're tuning. So you want to set them to the same, but you're tuning two separate carburetors. So I'm going to put the camera on a stand now, and I'll show you how to tune these carburetors. First, I'm going to do it with the engine off, so you guys can hear me clearly, and then I'm going to do it with the engine running and show you how I actually do it. And hopefully you will be able to hear me even though the engine will be running. Uh, hopefully the microphone will still pick up my voice. I'll try and speak as loudly and as clearly as I can. And I just want to emphasize one thing that this is something that you might want to do more than once. So the way I like to tune is I like to get a pretty good basic tune where the engine is running pretty well. And then I like to go on a test drive, get everything fully warmed, come back and then see what it feels like. So I'm going to show you now how I tune it to get that first initial tune, go up for a test drive, and then when I come back, I'm basically just testing the exact same thing again, seeing if each carburetor is rich or lean, and if they're still running evenly. So the first step is to get the engine up to operating temperature, so let everything idle, so everything is nice and warm, the thermostat is open, and everything is up to operating temperature. You don't want to tune a cold engine, because that's just a complete waste of time. Make sure that if you have a choke that is completely turned off or if you have an auto choke like I do that you make sure it's completely blocked off or at least it's completely turned off. So first thing I'm going to do is balance the carburetors, make sure that they're drawing the same amount of air through them. So I use my synchronizer tool, I'm just going to hold it up on here and I'll spin this tab back and forth on the first one until I see this little silver ball here or sometimes a red ball that it's up here in the middle. And then without touching this dial, I will then move it to the other one and see what it is. So if it's higher over there, I'm drawing more air. I will lower the idle on this side. And then in between every single adjustment, make sure that you grab your throttle cable or the throttle linkage and you rev the engine out. Make sure that you blow everything out. That way you're resetting it so you can test again. Also, if you've disconnected the throttle linkage like I've done separate it. Just make sure that both of them go back on the throttle stop so you don't have one that's a little bit open. So I always like to check that both are back on the throttle stop. Then I check again. And if both are in balance, maybe your idle is a little bit off. So go and check what your idle speed is. And if it's uh, off, if it's too high or too low, reset it so you have the correct idle. And then once again, blow everything out. Now, with that set, we can go on to the mixture. And also if I'm saying the balancing part is set, you're going to come back to it later. That's the thing, you work back and forth. It's not that you set a thing and you're done with that. You're working back and forth all the time. But now at least the balancing part is set for now so we can start working on the mixtures. So we talked about earlier that you can lift the pistons with lifting pins uh, here on the side if you have them. And if you don't have them, you can use a small screwdriver in here to lift the piston just a tiny, tiny bit. Okay, I've let the engine warm up. It's fully up to operating temperature. And, and I hope you guys can still hear me over the engine. I'm trying to talk as loudly as I can. So you start by getting your unison out. And you check each carburetor. And you adjust it, like we talked about before here, until the little ball is here in the middle. So, 
that's in the middle on that one. And it's idling a little bit higher on this one. It goes up to about here. So I'm going to start by lowering the idle on this side a little bit. And then make sure that they go by. A little under the middle. And a little under the middle as well. So they're balanced. They're getting the same amount of air in each one of them. I'm going to check what the idle is. The idle is down to about 650, but the idle is going to go up a bit when we tune it and get it more efficient. So you can start with one carburetor. Either you use the lifting pin like we talked about, or you stick a screwdriver in there. I may use the lifting pin. So first, blow everything out of it. Let it settle down. And I'll lift it slightly here. And you see it pretty much falls flat in the space and dies right away. So that's too lean. Right here. And that one is hardly any change at all. So it goes down just a tiny bit, but that one's just a tiny, tiny bit lean. So let's start adjusting this one. I'm going to start with half a turn. And then blow everything out. Still a bit too weak. Another half a turn. Did you notice that? How it's already running a little bit smoother? Okay. If you hear that, you hear the engine note go up slightly. And if I lift it more, it dies off. So that is pretty close to spot on. Move it up. Try this side. This side is actually really good. I'm going to try turning this one up just a tiny bit more. I'm going to just move it up. They're pretty even. Now you can check that the air balance is still good again. They're pretty much in balance. This one's a little, little low, so we'll give this one a tiny bit more. See, it's already running a lot smoother, a lot nicer. This would be my like preliminary tune. Now we'll go take it for a test drive, get it nice and fully warm, come back and I'll do this again. But I'm gonna just for demonstration purposes show you what it's like when it's too rich. So I'll take this one and I'll turn it in about one, one and a half turns. Alright, it should be really rich now. Let's see what happens when I lift the pin. You hear that? The more I lift the pin, the higher it goes up. It's gonna. Oh. And you can already tell it's not running as smoothly anymore. So I'm gonna turn it back. So that's good enough to go for a test drive. And that's it for this episode. And that's how I like to tune it. This is just the basic overview of tuning SU carburetors. You can go a lot more in depth and use a lot more tools. But this basic way does work. Uh, I like to test drive, go for a little drive, come back with everything fully warmed up and test it again, see if the mixtures are correct, see if anything has moved or expanded. If so, readjust and drive again. So maybe do it two or three times and then they should be pretty spot on. One thing to note though is that carburetors can fall out of tune. Those little adjustment screws, they can move a little bit. 
one thing you can do if your screws are kind of loose, you can use some type of pretty light Loctite you can get off again. All Loctite you can get off with a little bit of heat from a heat gun, so it's not really a problem. So if those are moving around a lot, you can use that and that will probably help you keep your carburetors in tune for longer. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend, leave a comment down below on what car you have with SU carburetors, and if you're not already subscribed and you like this kind of videos, please subscribe to the channel. And until next time, I'm Adam, and this was Luma for Classic. I'll see you soon.